Hey folks, how's it going? Today we are going to learn how to make this interactive music player in PowerPoint along with its waveform visualizations. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Studio 42 theme music. And if you'd like to skip ahead, you can always use the time codes to jump straight in to the tutorial. So before we begin the tutorial, let's play the entire animation so we can see all the elements that are included in it. All we need to do is click on the play button and let it play out. And that was pretty cool. So let's jump right into designing this. We'll begin by breaking down all the elements on the slide. Let's exit the full screen mode and go to our selection pane. Let's open the pane up. And as I've mentioned in multiple videos previously, it's always a good idea to properly label all the elements on your slide especially if it's a complicated slide with many layers, like this one. So first of all, we have the track time, which is the font over here. Then we have add-on buttons, which are purely for cosmetic reasons in this case. So let's make those disappear. Next, we have the play button, which appears when the track is playing. So it's called play color. And we have the white play button, which is visible initially. Then we have the artist name and the track name. Then we have the circular slider. We have the colored arc that appears as the track plays. And just beneath that, we have a grayed out circle. So we know the path that we need to follow. Then I'll skip a few of these elements and go to the last one, which is a background gradient. Let's remove that. Then we have something called the BG plate, the background plate, which is the rounded rectangle in black. We have a background picture, which is this little picture that gives a bit of depth to our player. Then we have the horizontal slider. So let's move this and see we have two elements here. One is the slider itself and there's another camouflage plate over here which we'll get into during the design part. So we can remove these two. And finally we have the video of the visualization itself and a cutout we've made in a circular form that covers this video. So these are all the elements that were used in making this slide. Now that we have a good understanding of all the elements that were used in the slide. Let's start our design by creating the main element, which is the waveform. So in order to do that, we'll have to pop out of PowerPoint for a second and go to a website called capwing.com. This is a waveform creator. Now, if you do a quick Google search, you'll find many waveform creating websites, both free and paid. I just happened to try this out and it worked well for me. So let's click on start editing. 
and let's upload our soundtrack. As soon as our soundtrack is uploaded, all we need to do is click on Convert to Waveform. And we can choose the style. And we can also drag it to increase the size of the waveform. Then let's change the waveform color to red. And let's change the background color to black. And it's as simple as that. Our output size is going to be 1 by 1 which is a square ratio because that works best for our design. And we'll export it into the standard 720p because in order to export into full def we need to upgrade to a paid membership. So once we're happy with our waveform let's just click on export video and let the website do its thing. Now in the free version of this you'll notice there's a bit of a watermark at the bottom of our video. But since we'll be cropping this into a circle, that watermark shouldn't really bother us. So let's go ahead and download this video. Let's place it in our work folder and rename it. Having renamed it, let's copy and paste it onto our slide. So let's open a new slide, close the selection pane and paste the video. You can test it out once and it looks pretty good. Now we want this to be in a circular shape. So we'll create a circular mask for this. In order to create a circular mask, let's first draw a circle, match it to the confines of the box of the video. Let's keep it slightly smaller. Let's drag it over to the left. Create a rectangle behind the circle. You can change the color. Send it to back. Select the rectangle, then select the circle. I'll make the rectangle a little smaller actually. Okay, now let's select the rectangle and then the circle. Go over to Merge Shapes and click on Subtract. Let's remove the shape outline and change the color to black. Now we can just overlay this on our waveform. We can use our arrow keys to adjust the positioning a little bit. But essentially, that's all we need to do. Next up, let's draw a rounded rectangle on our slide. Let's adjust the corners so it's just a little bit rounded and send it to back for now. Let's adjust the positioning of our waveform and cutout. We'll want it approximately here in the slide. Just for now, I'm going to add an outline onto our cutout so I know the exact positioning. And I'm going to change the rounded rectangle to black as well. Next, let's draw an arc. Press Shift and draw an arc. Use the yellow nodes to then make it into almost a complete circle. We we'll leave a little opening on the top. Let's right click on this, go to Format Shape, Line, and let's increase the width of this. So about 13 points looks good. And for the cap type, let's change it to round. So the ends are rounded. Then Let's select gradient line and let's change the gradient to pink and yellow. Let's adjust the angle to about 45 degrees and we'll play around with it a bit in order to remove the pink from the starting and just have it in the end. We'll take a little adjustment, but that should be all right. And let's copy this, make another copy of the arc and make it a solid line. Let's make it dark gray so it just stands out a little bit from our black background. Let's select both the arcs we've made 
and ensure that they're aligned together. We want the colored one on top. So let's bring that to front and then align them. Just for now, we'll group them and bring them over to our cutout. We'll then adjust the size of the arc so it matches the circle almost exactly. There we go. We can now ungroup both the arcs. So now if we see, this is what the result is. We can remove the shape outline from our cutout now. Let's take a look in full screen. And this is kind of the effect that we're looking for, the circular cut. Let's animate each element as we create it so we don't miss out on anything. So first of all with the arc, let's go to animations and find something called the wheel animation. So it'll look something like this. Let's play it and see. And next we'll go right click, go to timing. And in the timing, all we need to do is type out the same length as our track. So in this case, our track is one minute and 24 seconds. I hope that worked. Let's check the timing again. And there we have it. One minute, 24 seconds. So if we play it, it'll start appearing really slowly. Of course, since we're using a gradient, there will be a bit of a color spill. So let's place this back over. Next, let's create the slider. So that's pretty easy. All we need is a small circle. Let's remove its outline. Give it a white color. And let's give it a bit of a shadow. Having added the shadow, let's drag it over, resize it, and add it right in the gap of our arc. Then let's go over to animations, and this time we'll be adding a motion path animation, a circular one. So go to shapes and choose the circle. And then all you need to do is adjust the shape of your motion path to match the previous arc. It will take a few adjustments, but it should be fairly easy. Let's go over to our animation pane. Right click on it, go to effect options. Make sure to remove the smooth start and smooth end. And in timing, let's add the track time again. There we go. Let's select both the animations that we've created. Right click and set them to start with previous. So as soon as our video starts, the other two animations start along with them. So it should go something like this. And I think that looks pretty nice. Let's move on to our next element. Now in the original slide, apart from the circular slider, I'd shown you a horizontal slider so we'll make that next. Let's go to our shapes and create a rounded rectangle at the bottom of our slide. Let's adjust the corners to fully rounded and let's make the size a little smaller. We can use our arrow keys to place it properly. Now let's make a copy of this and just keep it to the side for one second. Let's remove the shape outline change it to black and we'll remove the shape outline of the initial rectangle as well. Next what we'll do is we'll select our background and the blue rectangle, go to merge shapes and subtract it. So now we have a cutout where our slider will move through. Let's make yet another copy of our black rectangle place it at the slider so we've camouflaged it 
and let's fill our original black with a gradient. Let's use the same gradient we used for the circle. So pink to yellow. That is the angle from left to right. So it should look something like this. There we go. This should be in the front of our black one. Let's take them both and send them to back. Now there's a little gap here, so let's use our arrow keys to adjust the gap. Let's take a look in full screen, so it should look something like this. Now the reason why we did this is, so the white or whatever color we're using in the background is not visible, yet we have the slider there. Next in animations, let's look for the stretch animation. I think we'll have to go to more entrance effects and there's stretch at the bottom. In effect options, let's set it to stretch from left. And in our animation pane, let's change the timings. And also let's make sure there are no smooth starts or ends, that's fine. And let's set it to play with previous. So hopefully it works. Let's check it out once. And there we go. That looks pretty nice. Next up, let's create a play button. So I'll design those on a fresh slide. So it's just easier to work with. Let's create a circle. Move the shape outline. Let's create yet another circle within it. We'll change the initial circle to a light gray. And for the inner circle, we'll change it to a black. Then let's find an arrow. And let's fill this with the same gray that we used for the circle. So that can be our initial button. Let's make sure there are no outlines on this. Let's copy the entire thing. Push it over. Let's fill the gray with a gradient this time. So the gradient should auto fill. We can adjust the stops a bit. And in the arrow as well, we'll add a gradient. So now we have two. This will be our initial arrow. Let's group it. And this will be the arrow that appears once we press play. So let's take both over onto our slide. Let's resize them to whatever works for us. For the colored arrow, let's add an animation of appear. Let's go to the pane and start with previous. And then we can align the two to overlap. Make sure they are aligned properly. So the colored arrow will only appear when we click it. Now, if you want, you can set this on a trigger as well, but I'm not getting into that at the moment because that adds a level of complexity that we don't really need for this slide. Next up, we'll add a background. So let's draw a rectangle in the back. Move the shape outline, send to back. And let's give it the same pink that we've been using. Then let's go to animations. Let's go to emphasis and fill color. Let's go to effect options here and fill color to say blue. So we can see that it'll change from pink to blue. No smooth start or end. Timing again, the same as the track. And set to start with previous. So what this will do is, it'll show a very subtle effect of the background color changing as the track plays. Let's take a look. I'll play the entire thing for a bit.
and as you can see the hue is changing slowly from pink to purple finally ending up in blue and there we have it that looks pretty amazing so essentially those are the animations that we need to create this music player and we can finish off this slide by adding a few cosmetic elements so let's add a few buttons that won't really do anything but they just complete the look group these two make another copy go to arrange and flip horizontal and add them to the other side as well and we can add yet another rounded rectangle over here in fact I'm going to move this entire setup a little bit more to the right there we go bring our buttons to the front and we can finally add the track name and the artist name so I'll quickly do that having added the text we can also animate that a little bit to appear once the music starts so I'm going to select both the text boxes and for this I'm going to give a float in animation to float down and in the animation pane of course both start with previous but I'm going to take them to the top and I'm going to add a slight delay to both the animations there we go and we're done so let's take a final quick look at the entire thing let's click on the play button and that looks really cool I hope you liked this tutorial there were a lot of neat little tips and tricks hidden throughout this that can be really helpful in your presentation design and if you genuinely found this useful I would love for you to leave a like, a comment or a subscribe. Thank you for watching and remember to keep on creating.